Okay, class, welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to cover an introduction to acute care physical therapy. Uh, there is also a video in our playlist that kind of goes through practically some of the stuff we'll cover on leads and where things typically are set up in uh, the hospital. Um, so I would recommend checking that out in addition to this uh, lecture here. So Dr. Bento did a fantastic job with that. So the objectives for today, um, we're going to cover, you know, what, what an acute care physical therapist does, like what do we do, and then we'll go over some basics of clinical reasoning, like when is it safe to mobilize a patient, to get them out of, you know, at them out of bed to perform some activity with us, um, why PT is consult, kind of what we do throughout that process, and then discharge planning kind of really getting into the core elements of like, you know, kind of like the Arnold Schwarzenegger in Kindergarten Cop, like, who is your daddy and what does he do? What, what does a PT in the hospital setting do? Um, and kind of why, why do we do it? So the role of physical therapy in acute care, um, we're, we're managing the patient's rehabilitation needs in an inpatient setting. Probably the, the biggest thing or the best way to conceptualize it is just like it is in any setting. We're determining the need for our services, for skilled physical therapy services, the prognosis for this patient, like what's their likelihood of recovering, over what time frame, just remembering that in acute care, the time frames are a lot shorter. We're not seeing patients typically in a hospital for the usual outpatient timelines of four to six weeks. We may only be seeing a patient for a couple days. So the timelines are a little bit different. So a lot of our progno prognosticating is determining the post-discharge needs. Like where is this patient probably going to need to go to, right, once they you know, are discharged from the acute care hospital or hospital setting, um, and then clearing them for discharge, right? So there's, we'll, you know, there's a process for that too. And then, of course, the rehabilitation, right? So we'll, we'll cover some things that we are not in acute care physical therapy. You know, we are not people walkers. We are rehabilitation experts, right? So we're helping the patient get moving, right, which is what, you know, we, we do often, which, you know, can kind of make things a little confusing because people almost often always see us walking and working with patients, but it's more than just that, right? Um, we are determining the need for, uh, you know, or determining their stability or their ability to perform different functional tasks. You know, that includes transfer, stair ascent, ADL performance, assistive device needs. Um, of course, ambulation is part of that. Um, we're also critical for preventing the acute deconditioning that occurs during the hospital, reducing the, you know, the incidence of atelectasis or pulmonary complications, bed sores, DVTs. So there's a lot more than what we do um, as a PT in the hospital than just walking patients, right? So I kind of like this little quote here from Office Space, like, what, what would you say you do here? Well, that's, this is kind of what we do, right? Um, and there's a great quote by uh, Sinnott, which describes the kind of the role of physical therapists in acute care. We must anticipate, interpret, diagnose, and prognosticate the impact and consequences of acute pathophysiology, pharmacology, and surgery, and the impact of pre-existing conditions of an, of an individual's ability to recover to their um, previous level of function after acuity resolves. So again, like, it's different than the, or the acute medical status of a patient in the hospital is a lot different than an outpatient setting, right? Because they're in a hospital for a reason. Um, could it be for a surgery? Could it be for an acute exacerbation? And then they usually have some pre-existing conditions on top of that. Um, however, the reasoning process that we go through, that we've covered throughout this course, is no different, right? We're still, you know, hypothesizing. We're testing our hypothesis with examinations, and then we're making assessments, and then we're treating as well in the hospital. And then, of course, for us, the big difference is, you know, determining where this patient's going to be going or needs to go after their acute admission in the hospital. So it's the same clinical reasoning process. There's a higher order of thinking and logic that occurs in this setting, too. And again, there's, there's some core competencies out there. Again, just you know, but the, the, a, a primary factor here, again, is that clinical decision-making. It goes, you know, it's a lot deeper than just walking patients, right? We're determining safety. We're determining what, like, what skilled needs they need, and then discharge planning, and then centered around it as well, communication. You know, 
unlike outpatient where you're, you're kind of on an island in a certain sense, you may have communication with a referring provider, in the hospital setting, you know, you're working with pharmacists, you're working with nurses, you're working with physicians, radiology techs, OTs, speech uh, language pathologists, dietitians frequently. And, you know, your care is delivered around the same, you know, the same time throughout the day. So it's coordination, communication, and things and the status of a patient can change pretty quickly, right, within a, within a hospital setting. So being able to have strong and effective communication skills is crucial um, to not only, you know, your success as a PT, but the success of that patient's course of care while they're in the hospital, as well as discharge planning and, and working with especially the case manager for that patient and the patient themselves and their families. So again, it's, it's a little bit different, but the similar principles. So core competencies, uh, this came from Greenwood, um, you know, knowing your limitations, that's probably the, the, the biggest thing that I think a lot of people maybe struggle with early on in the acute care setting, just knowing like what's, what's appropriate for a patient, right? What's, um, you know, what, what assistance may I need to help work with this patient? Of course, communication, we, we stress how important that is. Um, and then, you know, safety, we talked about that as being a core element. Going through the chart, understanding the acuity of the situation, the setting of that patient, interpret, interpreting um, information that you're, you're gathering both from your chart review, as well as communication with other providers, as well as just your own examination and being able to determine what's the, what's the most likely outcome um, from, you know, initiating a movement-based intervention um, or assessment for that patient. Like, again, these patients, their status can change quickly, right? These aren't people who walked into the, you know, an outpatient clinic. These are patients in a hospital, they're in, they're in a hospital for a reason. So just being able to recognize um, these, these quick changes, manage the equipment uh, appropriately, um, and then again, uh, monitor throughout. I mean, again, we cover the you know, patient management, intervention, and then a discharge planning. Probably the biggest things, um, you know, that, you know, acute care PTs do frequently. And again, the populations that you may treat in the hospital setting, uh, it's pretty diverse, but you know, you know, primarily gonna be working with patients post-surgical, either elective, like a bariatric surgery would be an elective surgery, or an emergent surgery. You could think of maybe a cabbage or some sort of emergency resection. Um, you know, acute medical illness or medical management, um, exacerbation of chronic conditions. We see this often with like COPD exacerbations or heart failure, decompensations, post-trauma. So this could be a fall, a burn, or other injury. You could even think of surgery in some respects is a controlled trauma. You may work with patients in the intensive care unit. That really is almost beyond entry-level skill. And if you talk to most therapists who work in the ICU, um, they, they would say that's almost a beyond entry-level because there's the you know patients in the acute care setting already are, are pretty, are, you know, they're, they're, again, their, their status can change pretty quickly and their medical complexity is pretty complex. The ICU is even a little bit further. We'll touch on this a little bit uh, later on. And then there may be patients who, you know, are under observation versus full admission. So some patients may j just be there to, just to see if they're, if they're, if they need to be admitted or not um, versus you now they're going to be, they're going to be staying these for, for maybe for a couple days. So the, what you didn't see here, which I hope we, we've kind of stressed, you don't see like a particular type of diagnosis, right? Acute care physical therapy is not cardiopulm. It's, it's not. It's every, it's the whole spectrum, right? You'll see geriatric patients. You'll see orthopedic patients. You'll see, you know, you may see some cardiopulmonary patients, a lot of it. You may see neurological conditions, right? Oncological conditions, right? It's a full spectrum. Acute care physical therapy practice is a setting-based area of practice. And because it's a setting-based area of practice, multiple systems may be involved. So you gotta be kind of sharp on all of them. And 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 for patients in a in an acute, you know, acute medical condition. One thing that I really hope that we can kind of we've gathered here from the stuff we've covered is that we aren't these things and this is this is a this is a stereotype or a stigma or issues that we're facing um and we're hoping to try to break this mold 
right? I don't want to hear people saying like, I'm here to walk the patient. I'm here just to get the patient up, you know, or the patient wasn't even walking before. Why did they put orders in? Or obviously we have to, you know, determine whether our patient's appropriate or not. But this one here, they are blank. That means I don't have to see them. Like working hard to not see people. We aren't people walkers. And there's a lot, there's a lot more gray area or more of a, a, a traffic light versus a stop sign in terms of our clinical decision, right? There's a lot more reasoning behind what we do than just isolated bits of information, like a patient's, oh, their hemoglobin's a little low, I'm just not gonna see this patient. Um, and for many years, like, you know, this is something that, you know, our, our approach to managing these patients was a little different than it is now. Um, and you may see this across the country still, people are kind of, you know, working towards improving the standards of practice, but um, this is something that I, I hope you guys take uh, upon yourselves to break the stereotype that, you know, we aren't just people walkers. We, you know, we are, you know, trained medical professionals that provide a valuable service to our patients, and we're a crucial element of the, the healthcare team in the hospital, right? And, you know, in order to kind of um, gain that, uh, that, that, you know, that perception by our colleagues, we have to demonstrate those behaviors in our communication and how we interact and manage these patients. So again, let's break that stereotype. Um, let's, not, let's not result like in a little a Yoda here, right? No, no disappointed Yoda. So uh, that's all I have for the intro. Then we'll get into some acute care clinical reasoning and things that you'll go through in this setting. Thank you.